Uh, theoretically, what could be done to a rod and ball joint uh, to increase the swivel angle? And is it worth talking about the swivel angle? Did, did that make sense or should we go over what the swivel, swivel angle means? Uh, could you show us what the swivel angle means? Yeah, okay. Um, so here, here's a, a, a rod end ball joint or sometimes it's called a hind joint. Just uh, spins around like that. And uh, typically you'll have a, a rod that goes through it like that. And this rod will be usually fixed in place so that the uh, the ball joint can't slide back and forth like that. It'll just be, you know, kind of fixed relative to the axial length of, of your rod. But uh, this rod can, can swivel like this. And if we look at it, uh, this is like the lowest position, right, that, that your rod can be. And then this is the highest position it can be. And so the, the difference there, so if like you kind of use some tools here to approximate that angle, you're going to have... Uh, a line there and then if we come down like this we're going to have another line right here so oops this angle right here right that angle that is the maximum swivel angle that this uh, uh, this ball joint will will accommodate so if this is 90 degrees how much we approximate that this one would yeah so that's maybe you know 65 degrees or, or something like that okay and and actually 65 degrees is usually kind of an upper limit for for these uh rod end ball joints most of them are actually down more like 25 or 30 degrees but then they have these these super swivel ball joints that, that go even further uh, and I, I believe this is one of those super swivel varieties okay so now that we've talked about what that swivel angle is let's say theoretically uh, we could get 65 degrees right here, but our application needs 70 degrees, just a little bit more than, than what we can actually accommodate. How might we modify um, something, either the rod or the ball joint, how might we modify it so that we can get another 5 degrees? I do have a question. Could you access the lesson? Oh, yeah. So... Um... Uh, the question was, if we scroll all the way up, and what's important to remember, point number one, and go to a 1A. Okay. It says, allows for three degrees of rotational freedom. So you said three degrees here, but it shows that we have approximately 65 there. Oh, I see. I see the confusion. Um, three degrees, a degree of freedom uh, doesn't... You, in this context, doesn't mean like a degree of angle. Uh, a degree of, of, of freedom would, would mean motion. For example, hmm, let's, let's draw something. Um, actually, let's start with, let's take a look at this uh, rail and carriage. This rail and carriage allows for one degree of freedom, just back and forth. It doesn't have anything to do with like an angle measurement, but when we say one degree of freedom, it means it can move in, uh, it, it might be back and forth, it could be rotational also. The, there are really just two types of degrees of freedom. There's linear motion, so this, and then there's rotational motion, right? So like a, a shaft that was, that was spinning like that. Those are the types of, of uh, degrees of freedom. And you can have up to six degrees of freedom. For example, in a CNC machine, um, some people talk about five-axis CNC machines. And that the five-axis, the five degrees of freedom would be three in the, in the linear direction. So you'd have like one here, and you'd have two there, like, you know, that way. And then you'd have three up and down like this. So those are three but we're talking about a five-axis CNC machine, so the other two degrees of freedom would be rotational. So you might have like rotation like like that, and then you, you might also have rotation, you know, in that that direction. So when we say three degrees of freedom, what we're saying is it can move in in three different methods of motion. So let's find the three degrees of freedom. Great. Back and forth. One. Rotation. Two. Where's the third? Okay, so typically you're, you're not moving back and forth like this. If you're using a ball end rod joint or a rod end ball joint, 
um, you're, you're usually going to lock the, the, the rod into the ball joint. So, so this degree of freedom usually is not happening. Um, the, again, talking about degrees of freedom, uh, X, Y, and Z are, are typically used to describe like the three different directions of, of motion. So if we were to draw that out kind of in 3D, it might look something like this, where, where this is up and down, this is out in that direction, and then this is this direction. So this might be the, the X direction of freedom, the Y direction of freedom, and the Z direction of freedom. And then about each of those directions, you can also have oops, rotational. So this will have six degrees of freedom, right? That's, that's right. Six degrees of freedom is really the, the most degrees of freedom that anything can have. So for this one right here, um, we're not going to count this one. Technically that's possible, but usually you're not going to have that in, in a rod end uh, ball joint. But you would have this right here. Which is what? This is a, a rotational degree. So if we were looking, let's see, what's the best way to look at that? Um, if we align it like this, so this axis, this rod right here, let's say that that's our X axis. And we're able to rotate in this direction. So which axis of rotation would that correspond to in our little sketch here? Y? Nope. Why Z then? Z. Yep, it would be Z. Exactly. And then how about this one? Then that has to be Y, I suppose. Yep, that's Y. Yep. And then the third one, which are, uh, uh, realistically, maybe it's, maybe I shouldn't even say a third degree because it's probably, it's not common either, but it could be, you could use it, uh, would be, uh, it's kind of even hard to see it rotating. Let's say I think there's a feature. There we go. You can see that feature moving now. That would be the third degree of rotation, which is, which one? X. Yep. X. So those would be the three degrees of rotation. And, and really it's, it's uh, Z here and, and Y there. Those are, those are the main two degrees of, of freedom. Okay. So back to the original question, which was, uh, theoretically, what could be done to a rod and ball joint to increase this swivel angle? Yes. And what I thought, we could wear it out, I suppose. Um, so I just chip away. Right here, just start chipping away mm -hmm. and chipping away at the top so I can reach higher or lower. Right, yeah. So show, let's see, let's look at exactly where the, the limit to that rotational tra travel occurs. Yeah, right there, right? Right here, it's the, the rod strikes the casing for the ball joint, and that's what limits its travel. So um, just like you said, yeah, you, you use the term wear away. I would probably use something more intentional, like um, cut, cut the rod. You know, cut cut a feature around the diameter of the rod to make that part of the rod smaller in diameter and increase that travel. Um, that's probably the easiest thing to do. Technically, you could also machine away, you know, some some of the material on the casing so it doesn't strike the casing there. But that's going to be a more difficult operation to perform. Is that recommended? No, okay. <laughs> not recommended to like machine away some of the casing. I think it would be permissible in certain applications to, uh, you know, turn down the diameter of your rod. Um, you could get away with that, but I, I would not cut the casing of the, the ball joint. If you found this content helpful, consider enrolling in our signature program at mypipelineacademy.com. Whether you're an individual interested in beginning a new career as a mechanical designer or a company interested in training your new engineering hires, our signature program helps students develop the practical skills they need to be productive mechanical design engineers. Seating is limited. We hope to see you there soon.